Many divorced women will tell you that collecting child support is often one of the hardest parts of the divorce process, but technology can help. There's a new app called Support Pay, and its CEO and founder, Sherry Atwood, is here to talk about this. Sherry, welcome to Arise Exchange. It's interesting. You're in New York because of an award that you won from J.P. Morgan Chase. Talk yeah, about that. A bit. Yeah, J.P. Morgan um, partnered with the Center for Financial Solutions and Innovation, and they were looking for technology companies that were helping uh, everyday Americans cash flow. So innovative, and we ended up winning that contest. Okay, talk about how you developed this app, and for which side of the equation is this app for? The person paying the child support or the person receiving it? Yeah, so it's for both, and so I'm a child of a divorce. My parents had a horrific divorce. So when I faced my own divorce, I did it myself. It cost us $350, couldn't be more amicable, went out for a drink afterwards. Uh, but what I found out was after to just share expenses, it was getting difficult. Then I started talking to parents, and what I heard was the person paying says, I have no problem paying. I just want to know the money's going to my kid. And the person receiving is like, he doesn't do the shopping, so he has no idea, like, tennis shoes cost $100. So with our app, you actually enter an expense and you attach a receipt. So they see it. We do all the billing. We do all the notifications. And we uh, keep a certified record. And, and does the person paying the child support pay the child support through the app as well? Yep, absolutely. And how do you make money? Uh, we make money as a subscri uh, subscription service, a monthly subscription, and it's in so individuals. So you're not taking a cut of nope. the child support? Nope, not today. We're not, no. Okay. And, and how receptive have people been to using this app? Because I imagine in most cases it will take both parties, and sometimes, as we know, divorces are not amicable, yep. to agree to this. Yeah, it's a great point. So earlier this year, we were at about 10,000 uh, parents. We're now at 32,000 parents. Uh, and we're also partnering with family law professionals. So we're starting when the um, divorce happens. But once they start using it, what we found is they're 90% more likely to exchange child support. Because of the transparency, it eliminates all those conflicts. They're no longer fighting in front of their kids. So it really makes their lives a lot easier. What about for women who, for the, the majority of which are on the receiving end yep. of, of child support, obviously, uh, in enforcing child support against, let's call them deadbeat dads, yep. does this app help create a record and do that for them? Absolutely. And that's one of the biggest issues is how much does he owe or even allowing him to contribute something rather than nothing. So we enable you to contribute cash payments, but they also have a record. And now it's the system sending the notification to him rather than her calling him up and nagging or trying to communicate with him. Plus, she has so a certified that's, that's record. interesting. It sort of removes the one on one and exactly. that is an independent entity, if you will, sending out notifications, reminders of child support, et cetera. Exactly. Uh, and do you, does, I, I, am I right that the vast majority of child support is being paid to women? Do you have 87%. To, 87%. Yep. Do you, are you seeing the reverse as well using the app? Absolutely. We've seen the parents, uh, step parents are a big one also. So a big conflict point is when they get remarried. In fact, a third of the parents in the U.S. have multiple children by multiple parents. So the fact that now they get remarried and they have to deal with these, the previous family. So we're seeing step parents, fathers, mothers, payers, receivers, all on the app. Okay, I want to talk about being a woman in yep. Silicon Valley. We have heard over and over again about this huge economic inequality, uh, as well as developer inequality, et cetera. How hard was it as for you as a woman to convince somebody to invest in this? It was incredibly difficult. I'm, if you look at me, I'm a woman. I'm over the age of 30. I'm a single mom. I don't have parents. Um, I don't have a technical degree or background. I'm everything that doesn't look like an entrepreneur. Uh, but what I do have is passion for this. I have work experience. And I was told over and over again, are you sure you can do, do this? Do you find this hypocritical on the folks of Silicon Valley because you're talking about people who go out there and talk yeah. about economic inequality and ra racial inequality and gender inequality, yet the statistics show that this is one of the most unequal, yep. unequal uh, industries there is. Absolutely. And it is the only thing that I can say is I was able to raise money. We raised 2.6 million so far. We're raising another 5 million. So it's possible. And so if I'm the least likely candidate and I could do it, it is absolutely possible. But do, we need do you more. think having the CEO of Facebook as a woman, do you think having a CEO yep. of Yahoo with Marissa Mayer as a woman, is that helping? There's some criticism that they're not, they're not doing enough. Uh, it's helping. It's definitely putting more out there, especially for kids seeing um, other, but there absolutely has to be a focus on getting more women and minorities 
starting companies and them getting funded. That's the problem is getting the money. I should say it's the COO of, of Facebook, <laughs> yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, still the CEO. What advice do you have for them for women going out to Silicon Valley who want to be in this industry? Uh, passion. Stick with it. You're going to hear no's a lot and show your value, why you're unique in the fact that you should be the person doing it. Uh, the other part is I taught myself how to code. I know how to code, so I know the technology side And that's well. also important for you to be able to have conversations yes. with the, it's a very geeky industry. They want to talk to <laughs> coders and exactly. engineers. Yes, and I get questioned all the time or say, no, you don't know how to code. Prove it to me, and I've had to sit there and show them. Uh, but it's possible, so actually just keep trying, and eventually we found an amazing group of investors. Uh, what's next for you then? What's Growing the, the business even further and getting another round of investment so we can get to 100,000 customers. How do you get to 100,000 customers? Uh, it take? Both awareness of the app, knowing that it's out there, and help the family law professionals providing this to well, their customers. That's very interesting, actually, get involved in the legal profession. Yep. Sherry Atwood, thank you. Thank you. Good talking to you. Coming up, a goodbye tour for sports legend. Stay with us. Thank you. That was